so yeah, I, I wanted to go over today the uh, the functions for um, uh, for columns. So I guess uh, maybe in all their more graphical glory, um, we're going to be looking at these guys, uh, the column functions: glimpse, mutate, pull, relocate, rename, and select. Um, right. Um, so I've prepared a little kind of code chunks for each of them in hopes that um, that'll help somewhat. Um, but if it ends up being kind of a bit of a bother, then we can jump past that. Uh, I, I have to say personally, I've, I've learned I've learned a fair bit through, through this exercise. Uh, little gems that I simply didn't know about before. Um, uh, uh, little things that maybe I'll be using in future. Um, Maybe not so much for glimpse, but for other things certainly. Um, so, kind of here's the documentation for 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 glimpse in the in the center pane here. So, um, the idea behind glimpse is, is it simply allows you to kind of see some of the attributes of your of your data. Um, here in the documentation, they say it just kind of has a transposed version of of, of print. So, uh, actually, to make that a little bit more concrete, um, we can look at what print looks like here um, in in the console. Um, you know, we've just got our, our columns arrayed here. Um, and, and then also, uh, this is that, you know, Glimpse has, you know, try, tries to do some of the things that, that the STR does, uh, you know, see the structure of your data set. Uh, you know, if you run STR, you can see the number of observations, the number of variables, um, names of the variables, names of the columns, and then um, their, 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 well, their um, data type. Um, and Glimpse kind of is a little bit the, the love child of these two. Um, uh, so what does it look like? Uh, it looks like, whoops, did, and of course I didn't. Glimpse, there we go. I didn't actually write Glimpse there. Um, so let's run Glimpse and you can see that it, you know, indeed it, it's it's a bit like print uh, in, in that it has all the values, but it's transposed. So we're seeing them in, in rows rather than in columns. Um, has some of the nice attributes of of, uh, of the str function. We see the number of rows, number of, of columns, uh, as well as the names of the columns. And uh, interestingly, we see a little bit more about the their data types. So we can see this is a double, not just a number, but a but a double. Uh, and then also it, it it appears in let's say kind of aesthetically pleasing form, um, where uh, you know. Uh, you know, there, there's some there's some subtle coloring that that might draw your attention to or away from certain things like you know the double right here, it's uh, you know lighter gray whereas here you know in str everything is exactly the same font type font face, um, and so it might be a little hard to pick out the right the right details at a glance or at a glimpse as it were. Um, so I guess one nice attribute of Glimpse is it's you know cleaner presentation than STR uh, has some of the goodness of of, of print. Um, also, um, it, it's it's uh, pipeline friendly, and this I didn't know about. Um, it, it's actually kind of an interesting attribute. Um, uh, maybe I'll just combine these. Um, um, and so if, if you wanted, you could actually glimpse at your data at various points in the pipeline. So here, you know, I have empty cars. I'm seeing, I want to see the whole data set. I'll select only certain columns and then I'm going to see the result. And so this could be maybe conceivably interesting if you want to see what's going on in your pipeline. Um, I, I didn't think about this as a need, but this is actually quite interesting. Oftentimes I end up finding myself, you know, running a pipeline up into a point to troubleshoot. Um, and, and then, you know, kind of manually inspecting the contents, this might be a nice alternative is just throw a glimpse in there um, to see actually what your data contain at various points. I mean, granted, there are no comments, and I think no, no ability to comment, but you can kind of see here that this is my, the data set as a, as a whole. And then this is the, the selected the selected columns. That's kind of nice, I think. Um, uh, another attribute or another interesting thing about Glimpse, I didn't realize uh, um, is that it's it's from Pillar. Um, so, you know, if you run if you run this, uh, you know, deploy with, with namespace for dplyr, run this with Pillar, you get exactly the same thing. And indeed, if you, you know, check whether the two, ident two, two bits of functions are identical, you know, loaded in the global environment, indeed they are. 
Um, so it's just re-exported um, from pillar into into dplyr. Um, yeah, so that's 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 on glimpse. Um, I don't know if anybody has any other things to say about glimpse. These are kind of the things that jumped out at me in, in looking at the docs. The the docs really don't have too much because glimpse just takes you know and your data as an argument and that's it. There's there's nothing more you can do with it that I know. Yeah, I agree. I think that's pretty cool. That I never thought to do that because I thought it was just like a side effect, right? And it's just printing it, and you couldn't do it in a pipeline. But I know I think Glimpse is really useful, especially for people who are starting out in R. Yep. Who I find they often use View to see the column yes. names or like see the data. Yep. And like you said, structures or SDI is not as nice a print as the Glimpse, and it gets quite a lot of usage. I think. When, especially when you're dealing with new data, when you don't know the column names and you yep. just can't remember. But yeah, yeah that's completely cool, the, the pipeline thing. Yeah, the pipeline thing was a bit of a surprise to me. I mean, I, I, I this is a, I think there's a function called, uh, or rather a package called assert R um, that does a little bit on sort of, sort of like asserting that things are true about your data in a pipeline and then stopping if those things aren't true. But glimpse might be nice if you just want to see what's what's going on and don't want to be bothered with learning something new, I guess. Um, yeah, on... like you said, I do the thing where I highlight part of the pipeline, yep. minus the next pipe, and just print. Um... Exactly, exactly. Yeah, same same with me. I think there's some other package I recently came across that um, I think allows you to step through the steps in the pipe. Um, well, now that I'm saying something about it, I don't know that I quite remember what it did exactly. Yeah, um, there is a package. It's it's to do with the. It's like a tidyverse thing, right? And it will say like uh, it. It's very verbose about what's just changed in your data, mm. um, and it, it tells you what's happening as it's happening. Yeah, that could be a tidy log. Oh, tidy log. Cool. I'll have to look that one up. Uh, um, I guess I'll move on to mutate. Um, mutate. Actually, it was really quite interesting for me. There are things that I knew, you know, obviously I use mutate as probably all of us do. I use mutate all the time, but there are things about it I didn't realize actually. Um, and in the description, you know, if you just look at the, the docs, then kind of straight away, you can see, um, you can see kind of the first line description just creates new columns um, that are functions of existing columns. It can also modify columns. And then this last part, I didn't know, um, deletes columns by setting their value to null. That was kind of interesting to, to, to me. Uh, and then also there are all these arguments that I did not know about. I think many of them are new. Buy is, is certainly new. This is the experimental buy. Um, but there are also these other columns which end up doing some of the work that I would assign to other functions, you know, keep. So this is, um, We'll get to that in a bit before and after, which is a bit like, uh, I mean, it does what relocate does. Um, but I thought this was really quite interesting that mutate on its own had some of these nice, nice features, nice features about it. Um, so I guess I'll go through these, you know, in, 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 in turn. Um, so, I mean, creating maybe nothing new, if I wanted to do something uh, horrific, like have a, um, kilometers per, per gallon. So mixing, I guess, maybe the worst of metric and imperial units. Um, you know, I could, I could do that uh, if I were, if I were so inclined um, and just, you know, see, see these, they, they do this little computation. Um, so here I'm creating, um, I'm creating a new column. So uh, kilometers per, per gallon. I could modify, uh, I could modify columns. Uh, um, I guess I'll throw a little shade on VW. Uh, you know, they got caught in this this uh, scandal not too long ago where they're uh, modifying. Um, uh, so when when testing was done, they were modifying the results of what was testing for for kind of um, um, tailpipe emissions, and uh, so maybe they could do the same for for fuel efficiency. So just take miles per gallon and and, and double it, right? So I mean, we could we could do that. We ha we have the same column that exists in the data set, and we're simply modifying its its value by by doubling its 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 value, um, that's 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 one thing that we could we could do. So you can see here that you know we have twenty one, or now we have forty two, etc. Um, so you can modify. 
this delete bit was new to me. I, I don't know if others knew about this, but this is kind of interesting. Like, let's say I just want to get rid of cylinders. I really don't like cylinders uh, for some reason. I, I, you know, cylinders comes typically right after the miles per gallon here. And you can see, lo and behold, there are no cylinders to, to, be, to be found um, in, in, in the data set. I thought that was really quite interesting. By setting uh, a, a, a column's value to null, you, you, you get rid of the, the, the column. So in effect, it's sort of like select, you know, the kind of the, the select where you can say, don't take these columns. I, I thought that was really quite interesting. Were others aware of this, this little feature? Or, or actually, be maybe if you are, if you use it. Uh... No, I wasn't aware, and I don't use it. But I wonder if sometimes it's like if you're in, like I wonder why have it right. Like kind of guess, I guess what you're saying. This is like select minus the column. Yep. Um, maybe just you can save some space and typing sometimes, like you know, like multiple mutates in the same thing you just drop a column without having to call select yeah yeah, yeah. exactly i, I mean for to my lights i was still probably all things being equal i would still probably prefer select just because it's you know if someone were reading the code it's probably mm -hmm. clear what's happening because i'm not relying on i don't know what seems to me is like it's not a hack because you know the document this is on label usage uh uh, of, of 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 mutate, but but somehow like select is more descriptive about, at least to my mind, about what's what's going on. Whereas kind of mutating something to null, it doesn't doesn't quite register. Um, yeah, it's not explicit, um, yeah. which could be bad. I guess we'll get on to dot keep right because I've actually never used dot keep, and I, I had neither. That was a revelation to me. That 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 was really quite interesting. Um, yeah, because I, I guess some of the things you've done in here, you can do with dot keep instead of selecting. Exactly. Um, exactly. Yeah. I'll, I'll yeah, I'll leave that when you get to dot keep. Okay. Um. Yeah. Let me see. Okay. Keep. Uh. I'll I'll just kind of dispense with buy pretty quickly because um, maybe there's more that's interesting here for me. I didn't really see a huge thing of interest, but I was thinking, okay, you have this buy variable. Um. <clears throat> and and I was wondering, you know, what would be the utility of this, I guess, you know, whenever you would be kind of doing the group by, by, and then specify some, some set of grouping variables and then perform a mutate within the group. Um, I mean, now, now you don't have to do that. So instead you could have a pipeline that looks like the following, take empty cars, mutate things. Here I'm doing something really silly of just taking the number of observations within the group, the group being, actually, I should probably do that for readability, um, uh, is, is the, the number of cylinders. So within the group, each group of numbers, a distinct group of uh, um, uh, represented by like the certain number of cylinders, take the total number of observations uh, that exist, the you know, count of observations, and then I'll create some new variable called you know miles per gallon times size, which is simply miles per gallon times the number of observations in the group. Really silly thing to have, um, and then we can kind of see see how that 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 works. Um, here I'm I'm doing view, um, uh, right. So I've got my I've got my data set. So you can see here. Actually, this is uh, maybe I'll make VS Code a little bit less big. Um, uh, so here here you know I can see I've got uh, eleven observations within the four cylinder group, um, and then if I take you know miles per gallon. Um, here times 11 gives you 250.8 and, and, and so on and so forth. So indeed it's doing exactly what it purports to do. Um, you know, uh, doing some operation within, within a group um, and then not having that kind of grouping variable persist. So this grouping variable only holds for, for kind of um, it's sort of ephemeral, right? It's just for this, this operation and, and, and doesn't hold for any other operations thereafter, or this set rather set of operations. Um, this, this mutate basically, um, and 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 not for not for others. Um, I'm actually curious if anyone has used uh, by very much with with mutate and whether this seems like a, an appealing alternative. Personally, I've not. Much. Yeah, I do now. Um, okay, because one of the things that's nice about it is it's it's explicit what you're grouping on in that mutate. Mm -hmm. so say if you grouped a few lines up. 
did yep. some filtering and some other stuff or slicing and whatnot. Either you're going to group, do that, ungroup, and then group again. Yep. Or you're going to group, do do the thing you did further up, and then you don't actually have to ungroup. You can just group again by new grouping variables, and you, it like overwrites what happens before. But it, I find like people didn't really do that. And when I did it, people would ask me like, "Why have you done that in this thing?" And then mutate now that that it's in line. It's just it's clear what you're grouping about in the mutate. And like you say, it's ephemeral. So it just disappears and it's quite nice. And some pipelines that before had multiple grouping stages, like they've, they've gone down from like 15 lines to like seven or eight. And it's just easier, or at least it seems easier to me to read what's happening and get it. And I think there are performance things, but I don't know the full like low level details of that. But they said it, thing in the documentation when they released it like it was inspired by a data table yep and i would guess like the inline grouping aids performance but I, it, I, it'd be I, interesting to see if it's as performant or anywhere near as performance as data data dot table because uh actually there's i think a recent release uh with a blog article and and i think one of the topics you know normally i guess for the the, the patch releases they don't normally have uh blog blog post, but I think this one was talking about some performance regressions that happened with dplyr 1.0. Um, I don't know. I wonder, I wonder what the state of things is now. I, I, from my own part, I've, I'm not working with big enough data set or complex enough operations really for, for those performance differences probably to make a meaningful impact for, for, for me, but mm -hmm. I, I know for some people it does matter. Yeah, I yeah I don't know if it's I don't know if they're just closing the gap or like you know like just reducing it a little bit or they're getting quite close. I would imagine data tables still a lot faster. Um, but I, I do I do think the benefit of this inline grouping is readable code, and when you're like when you want to group differently for the next operation, which might be a slice, a filter, or whatever, that you don't have to do that really clumsy like group again, ungroup or whatever. You just you, you just do it right there and then you can see for every call what it's grouping by. I, yeah. It does take a little bit of like getting used to if you're really used to the old way of doing it. No, I think I think that's the case for me, Jack. I, I think I'm very used to the group by and uh, I think I'll just have to get used to it. I, I'm curious, like stylistically, do you do something like this where you maybe put this argument first? So it's sort of clear that it's it's a, a by thing within the mutate call or... or yeah, I maybe it's a minor could. point, but I'm, I'm I mean, just I, thinking about like code readability. You know what I mean? Yeah, I like. I haven't done that, but I would think that's a good idea. I mean, the only thing is in mutate, and uh, you're so, oh, not so used to, but just always used to like the ellipsis, right? The columns that are being acted on being first. Yep. Um, but I think yeah, you could put the by or like add a comment at, at the beginning, like this replaces group by. Um, okay. Yeah. But by then, maybe you should have just used like, like group by if, you, if like you're interested in. Space, <laughs> space. Yeah, fair enough. Although maybe that would be you know few enough times just to get your colleagues acclimated with 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 something new. Uh, and yeah. Drop sure. drop drop off the training wheels after that. Uh, um, yeah. On on then I guess to keep um, this argument keep, which was completely new to me. I, I was. I was unaware that it existed. I, I'd just been happily plugging away with mutate, um, uh, you know, just focusing on the ellipses part of of, uh, of 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 the kind of the specification, you know, the documentation. Completely unaware that uh, that that this existed. Uh, in, in, in fact, um, I, I I probably should have known that something was up because I. I was I was searching recently for for dplyr transmute, which I, I never got the point of initial when I was first learning dplyr, and then I found a use case for it. And I was like, wow, this is this is a godsend. This is great. And then I was re you know recently I was looking for it again. I was like, where has transmute has has transmute gone? And it turns out that you know with keep you can you can do what you did with transmute and 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 more. Um, uh, so may, maybe I'll. I'll Bring this over here. Um, so, so for keep, there are a few, a few possible um, values. So, um, keep, 
you know, all, I guess is the default. You keep, you keep everything used, unused, and none. <clears throat> now these things probably bear a little explanation. So I'll just read, read the docs aloud. Um, so all retains all the columns uh, in the data. That's the default. Used uh, retains only the columns that are used in the ellipsis part to create new columns. Um, so for example, if I wanted to you know, multiply uh, miles per gallon times cylinders and create something new, then here um, I would have my output data set, if I can put it this way, would be three columns. The column I created, something, and then miles per gallon and cylinder. So the only other ones involved. So basically all the columns that are used in the mutate and, and then all the others are, are, are silently deselected, right? They're, they're, they're dropped. Um, that was that I thought was kind of interesting. And I, I think I might actually find some use cases for this in future now that I know this, this exists. Um, so you've got used, you have unused, which retains <laughs> this is kind of the, you know, the, the complement of this uh, to, to a degree is like it retains only the columns not used in, in the, the ellipses part to create new columns. This is useful if you want to generate uh, new columns, but no longer need uh, the columns used to generate them. Um, so let's see what this does. So here I'm creating something. Uh, again, it's the same operation, but I'm, I'm the keep argument is is unused. So here I get I, I don't get the the inputs in my computation. So you, you don't find miles per gallon and cylinder, right? Uh, instead, you find everything else that exists in the empty cars data set plus something, um, which is interesting, I guess. I think there's probably there are probably also uses for this, you know, to the extent that like let's say in your mutate you may have a string of computations where you're in, you maybe for a variety of reasons you do intermediary computations you don't care about the intermediary results, right? You only care about the final result. This this might be useful for for for, for that maybe that kind of case or some something something akin to it. Um, the the last um, the last one and this is where uh, transmute um, or sorry. The kind of mutate uh, with keep supersedes um, transmute is is none. So none uh, doesn't retain any extra columns from the data. Only the grouping variables and the columns created are kept. So with transmute, um, basically the 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 way it worked, as I seem to remember, is that um, only the the generated columns from the mutate operation were were kept. I, I'm not sure about the grouping variables. Probably that was the case, but um, yeah. So here um, I should get an output data set that consists only of the variable something. Um, let's see if that's the case. Yep, I look at names uh, and I've got I've got something, right? That's that's it. Um, this this is quite quite useful. Um, although again, for me, I guess my my like mental muscle memory rotates around transmute, so it'll take a little while for me to get acclimated with this. This new new way of doing things, but hopefully, I, I don't know. For me, it seems like there might be enough value of these other things that I'm going to start using keep, or at least look for opportunities where I could use keep, and maybe simplify my life. Uh, you know, by not having to have a select, for example, that 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 follows. I'm not sure if there are any um, performance improvements, or if this is kind of performance-wise equivalent to having a select call that would follow maybe. A, a mutate. Um, has anyone used the, the the keep? I have no idea about this. Yeah, this 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 was like a revelation for me. I I I had never never heard of this before. Is it wait, was it with one point That's a good question, it Rebecca. I I don't know. Um, Jack, do you have you kept track of this at all? Like what when right, keep prepped in? I no, I didn't I, so I didn't know they exist. I remember them. I think it did come with the, the recent update, just speculating because I remember them saying transmute was being superseded in favor of something else. And I would guess it was this thing. Um I can look at I can briefly go through the patch if I can put it as a to-do. Um, 
So. Yeah, okay, maybe maybe there are too many things here. Um... Yeah, so it, it was it newly superseded recode, recode factor, and transmute, and it's transmute is superseded in favor of uh, mutate dot keep equals none. And that was for 1.1.0. .1 okay, 1.1.0. Yeah. Where did you see that so quickly? That's, it's just, um, let me link you. In the news? So I, I'll send a link to the Tidyverse Docs channel. And then I just control F transmute just to see like what it was saying. Got it. Well, I think it looks really helpful for me for the debugging. I mean, their example on the argument for checking that you created things mainly that you, you can use real quick, um, just very quickly. See that you haven't done something silly and then change it back to be unused or none. Yeah, I think it'd be so useful for a lot of these things because I kind of like after I'd rarely use transmute because at first I didn't really get why you would. Then when I got why you would, I was so used to just using select minus or like yep. whatever that I just never really used it. But this is, I can see this being, first thing is this being really useful. There's yeah. quite often I do things like get the um frequencies of something turn them into percentages get like odds ratios mm -hmm. and at the end i only need one column um and you could just yeah you can just mutate at the end and just keep the the last columns i i gather which would be just yeah succinct um, and quite nice yeah i don't like the um argument name though or keep i feel like none uh it should be new or something none seems weird Keep keep for me sort of works, I guess. Uh, but I, I guess I'm coming from Stata, um, uh, where keep is like how you would keep var variables, for example. Um, so it's maybe kind of natural for for me. But only, think, the part that I don't like about it is, is actually the 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 what do you call it the um, the yeah, argument that's values. What I'm saying, I think. Yeah. yeah, that's what I meant. That's what oh, I meant. sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah, the argument names. Yeah, those are not very intuitive. No, they're not. That's what I was going to say as well. Good job. Seeing you things, you know? Yeah. I mean, I guess I'll, I'll as, as they say, like, I guess in computer science, like, the hardest thing is naming things. And uh, they had to give it a name. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm, cause I'm still not, I'd have to play with it, I think. Um, yep. It seems a bit abstract right now because I, don't know just from reading that that the things I want to do, I would take used or unused, or like which one of those would do yeah. what I want it to do. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I all, you know, I get uh, none, I guess I can get mm -hmm. after reflection. I, I guess the one fact I didn't make, didn't see here is like, so in whatever option you choose, the newly created column is kept. So it's always kept. For mm -hmm. each 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 one of these, and 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 the only difference between these is which other variables are also kept. Um, so none of the other variables, I guess, all of the other variables, um, those variables that are used and those variables that aren't used. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, now that I'm thinking about, it, it starts to make sense. I can yeah. see like if you do a bunch of operations on some on some columns, and then you say unused, it will get rid of all of those columns that you already had that were like they were used in your operations. So keep all the rest of them that had nothing to do with this. Yep. Which like, that does make sense. At least I think it does. Um, but it will probably, probably want to tread carefully with at the beginning, I think. Yeah. Yeah. One, uh, one thing, um, so like, did, did anybody get, this took me so long to get, um, and I saw it in like a YouTube video somewhere a while back, is like in tidyverse and column functions like mutate and stuff, it's always new equals like old. So like mm -hmm. mutate, rename and stuff. It's just always that way. I don't, I don't think it's even in the official documentation necessarily, but like- Oh, that's that's a good point, Jack. Cause um, yeah, they make it explicit in, re in rename, for example, about the order. Um, let's see. <laughs> No, that's sort of uh, assumed contextual knowledge, it seems. 
Yeah, it could it could be in there. I hadn't read it thoroughly, but I don't know how many times I have renamed with old equals new. <laughs> I want to rename this column to something else. Um, yep. But like when when I finally got or someone pointed out that it's always new equals old in these verbs, I was just like, ah, okay, good. Like that that makes so much sense. Yeah, I, I, I definitely I, for me like the new the new equals old kind of that 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 makes sense to me because that's what I found elsewhere. But I, I tell you like for, 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 for rename, I always, I find myself always looking at the docs because um, I guess muscle, mental muscle memory is strong and Stata um, when you're renaming things, it's actually uh, what kind of what your intuition is, Jack, is it's uh, um, old, old and new, um, right? So rename this old thing to a new thing. Uh, in a sense, like it follows, I guess, the English like language word order, I suppose, like subjects, I guess, is the thing you're changing. And then, you know, the result is the object, you know, the thing you're changing it to. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I guess yeah. it all depends on like where you're, where, where you're coming from, because I'm sure other languages do, do this, do this differently. Yeah. I just thought of something else is you've got this um, up in the help, right? Like, so dot by does like takes tidy select, which is like, mm. yeah, that's quite interesting because you can do all the stuff like what starts with or like, I don't know, column index one to 10 or whatever. Or like, oh, yeah, you can do, yeah, and I'm not sure how much use that would ever be, but like, it's interesting to see that they have decided to do it with tidy select. Yeah, that's a good point. I actually didn't notice that on 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 reading through. Is 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 that any different than group by, or can you in group by in specifying the list of uh, of variables? Can you also use tidy select? Yeah, I, I think I think you can. Um, I'm pretty sure you can do like starts with and stuff in group by or ends with. Um, just off the top of my head. Yeah, I I will draw up a little bit of. I'll make an example now and see if it does work. See so you can it, definitely see if it works. Do it with select and stuff. So I imagine you can do it with group. Yeah, probably so. Probably so. Because I guess ultimately, like it resolves to a, a list. I guess. Well, I don't know. Maybe it it doesn't exactly, but uh, that's my mental model of things. Um, uh, I guess. I'll move to before and after. This is another thing that I was not aware of. I didn't realize that this existed in um, in in mutate. Um, and instead, what I've been doing is this kind of this this two step dance of mutate relocate. Um, and now I realize that I can do it in one step. Um, it may or may not be extremely readable. That that much I'll ha that'll have to explore. In practice, but you know what? What's nice is that it can be it can be done. Um, so you know, for example, if I wanted to create this new column something and place it before miles per gallon, which is the first first uh, variable in the data frame, uh, you know, I can do exactly that. So something appears before miles per gallon. Um, I can do the same thing with 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 afterwards. Um, so I can create. Uh, so here, this is the case where I'm, I'm creating one new variable, but I could create several, one new column, I could create several new columns, and implicitly I take that set of things and place it after some variable, so after, let's say, cylinder. So I have something and something else, those two should appear after cylinder, and indeed they do, um, right after, right after cylinder. Um, that's, that's really quite nice. I, I'll, I'll be interested to see for myself like how often I end up actually using relocate uh, now that now that mutate allows this to be done. Um, and, and actually like for by or the dot by, we can use tidy select to um, to select variables. Um, yeah, has so anyone I, used this I, feature before? I, I think you you'd made note um, that this is a game changer. I don't know if it because you're using it or do you think it will be a game changer for you? Jack? Um, when, or just when I, when I found out about them a while back, they were a bit of a game changer. Like I'll often want, sometimes I have to work with lots of columns, you know, like hundreds of mm -hmm. columns. And I just want the column I just made just to be first. So you can do dot before equals one. 
uh-huh. then it becomes the first column. Ah. Um, and you can, and, you can and like you said not that. before everything. How do you use that? Uh why well, I, I just use dot before one, but I guess dot before everything. The first one, okay. Yeah, you yeah. can do everything also. So yeah. I don't I've think used... that's cool. Yeah. I've started using uh, dot before and after uh, a couple of times now, but I think the previous one that you showed was interesting, was new to me. And um, I mean, I, I joined like halfway through the discussion, so I was not sure you were talking about transmute and I was like, okay, but I was looking at this example, which was mute. So I wasn't quite sure, but I think towards the end when you showed that all, I realized what I think, I'm just sort of trying to uh, make sure I understood it right. So I think what you were, what you all were talking about was that within mutate, you know, we could replicate uh, transmute also by choosing which, uh, like by default. So I think uh, the default is keeping all the variables, right? That's what we Correct. always mm-hmm. use with mutate. But if we wanted to reduce this to, you know, instead of using having to use select minus, I think one of your efforts. So you could say how how small we want this next step to go to. So either you just, if you do um, dot keep is equal to none, then it, it becomes equivalent to a transmute, right? Exactly, exactly. At least right. that's and my understanding. Between, yeah, and then the used unused are also very interesting because you can say, uh, so then used would be, so in, in the first case, when you, and we, if you used used, it would be, uh, so out of let's say 10 columns in the calculation uses two columns. So it'll have the new column and then the old, the columns that are used in the calculation and nothing else, right? Exactly, and exactly. In case of unused, it will be like, you know, um, what do you call the subtract A minus B kind of thing yep. from A data frame minus B. So yeah, that was cool. So when, when you talk about the all is there is when it sort of, you know, all got clearer and I was like, oh, this is so interesting because for us, we always do you all. And then, yeah, then, you know, we do select of minus, select minus of blah, blah, blah. So this could definitely come in handy in many cases. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I definitely agree. Oh, coming yeah. back, actually, sorry, the one thing that, that um, in, in, in hearing you speak, one, one thing that kind of came to mind, um, maybe at the risk of jumping ahead of myself. So if, if you wanted to place the column first, I guess, you know, Jack's solution works, but I don't know if there's any other solution for that. However, for relocate, for example, sorry, I'm, I'm jumping, jumping ahead here. Um, there is... Uh, there is this little function last call. So you can say, basically I can relocate a variable to after the last current column, but there's not there's not first call, right? Before the first column, or if there is, I, I, I've, not, I've not run into it. So I guess, I guess Jack's solution of like taking the, the column index, you know, the first, the first column is, 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 the way to, is the way to go unless there happens to be some undocumented or not well documented um, we could kind of we could try equivalent. it um, in the the first example if you want to try so i i didn't know if, you know i think when you said one was was, was it literally the position one is, is that what you mentioned because i've never mm-hmm. used it that way so i always go okay not before the name of the column whichever you know it could yep. be first column or the, Same. any any other location so let's maybe can we play around with that? Maybe let's just in the first case if you put yeah one. We do like the, the column index, and I think we'll probably yeah. get the same yeah the same thing. So yeah, comes comes the very first here. Awesome, yeah. and can try everything the function everything. Uh, before everything, ah uh, yeah, that could yeah. be it. That's interesting. I wonder if that makes sense in this context. Uh, oh yeah, that works. Cool. Select. Um, because tidy select is like uh, everything is like a, t- a tidy selecting function. I just need to, there's an independent fact checking has gone on. So you can't, um, with group by, you can't use tidy select. So you can't use starts with and different things. Oh, interesting. Um, I raised an error straight away, um, despite saying that I thought you could. Um, so there, you, <laughs> you cannot just before that goes out online. In- interesting. So, so, so in that, huh. So in that sense, you know, this, this might, is it, yeah, it does something that the, the group by doesn't. Um, that's that's interesting. I wonder. I wonder if the group by behavior is going to change in future. Yeah. So that that makes me think, or just bring up uh, a question. And it's fine if you think it's 
you know it's out of scope and you don't want to discuss it but i i encountered this problem a lot and i think this has to deal with tidy selection versus masking is that when i whenever i use all these tidy verse uh, you know verbs in a function uh it's it's crazy how some of them behave in a similar way but others don't like the others other set kind of behaves in a separate way you know what i mean by that is you know when i have to pass column names to it right mm-hmm. so with some of them um the double angle uh, what is it called double curly brackets would work absolutely mm-hmm. fine but in other cases i have to do that uh, bang bang sim mm-hmm. which is the older way of uh, you know use referencing your columns before the double brackets came in um so any thoughts anybody want i mean is it is it something that we want, we can discuss today and uh, i would love to hear your hacks on that i so think, remember how those things work i think that's one that we touched on in like an earlier one right and we were we were quite clear that we needed to do a lot more on it but that's like as well it comes into the difference of data masking environments yeah and okay. i think the the data masking um and a vinya or help that deepfly had is really good but we're probably going to okay. do like a whole session on that in the not too distant okay, future sure sure yeah absolutely not to don't mean to uh, you know digress this discussion so we can yeah. carry mm-hmm. on i mean for for whatever it's worth on that topic i my <laughs> my feelings about that are, are pretty well aligned with your 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 own you know like it i i just I figured out what works for, for, for me, <laughs> exactly, but, yeah. but 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 yeah. you know I I find myself like looking back to the deeplier programming vignette or or uh, yeah. or trying trying to look Stack through overflow, our, our, to our far far too right. often yeah. yeah yeah so I I just uh, you know look at uh, Stack Overflow every time so what do I need to do to dynamically pass argument names to yeah. deepi then next time to mute it and what not. Yeah. so and and i just figured it out like this time what is going to work all right let's go for it one thing though i had interestingly i had i found like i guess something this week was uh, all this while i was always the only ways i had figured out to do these things was uh, passing them as a string vector so c you know double brackets column name uh-huh. comma double yeah. sorry not double brackets quotes column name uh-huh. uh, comma quotes column name but um, um and again it might be selective in in some for those functions but uh if i'm using the curly brackets then i don't need to pass them like double quote like the quoted ones i, I have not figured my the reasoning behind it but i feel satisfied that you know at least i can go back to the tidy verse style of calling my functions yeah yeah, um, okay. yeah so it, it, it works just, until you know, you're in like a summarize or <laughs> and you then you're doing a mean or a, a min or a max or whatever and in that environment then it's not um data masking or oh, there are, there are like ways it breaks down if you use the braces which it doesn't break down in the same case as if you use the like rlang nsim and enquo and stuff and with the bang bangs but it's yeah it's a bit of a minefield going from using deeplier to making functions that properly mesh nicely yeah deeplier yeah. verbs exactly exactly Yeah, I look forward look forward to that discussion when whenever we we get there. Um yeah, I mean I I guess in the interim I'll just kind of march dutifully forward um you know with some of the other functions. Um pull um I guess there's really um uh yeah, so you can kind of read here you know, if if you love if you love kind of dollar sign selection and you love pipes, you'll love pull. Um uh there wasn't too much in the docs it was honestly this is very new to me with with one with one exception um um regarding named um named named vectors um but you know it's it's kind of interesting here like you can you can pull you can kind of pull like basically you you you're going to select a column um and it'll be returned as a character vector right so you can take you can take a, a column out of uh you know in, in the miles per gallon column and you know you have a you have a a, a, a vector so sorry character vector a, a vector um you can you can also kind of um uh use use indices i i didn't realize that was the case um jack sounds like you're a lot more proficient with kind of use of use of column indices than than, than I. I i don't use it in practice typically but i i think i'm going to start trying to um, so if I wanted, um, you you can you can specify either 
positive indices or negative indices. So positive counting from the left, uh, negative ones counting from the right. So here, if I wanted to target, um, if I wanted to target, um, let's say the, the sec second variable, um, I could I could do I could do that. So here I'd end up in this case with with pole. I'm I'm getting cylinder, um, and you know if I just look at cylinder straight away, you can see it's the same the same content. There's a little truncation here, but it's the same content. And I could do the same with with um, with um, the negative uh, indices. So if I wanted to take negative first, negative or negative second in a certain sense, then I can target gear uh, in, in this way. Uh, so if I pull variable negative two, and I'm, I'm targeting gear, and we can confirm that it's gear by looking and seeing the content is is exactly the same. I thought that was that, that was kind of interesting that you could use use the Use the column indices. I, I, I'm not, like I said, I'm not in the habit of, of doing that. So that's that's something I'll have to start doing in future. Um, that, that, so after that, huh? so um, one thing I put in the chat is like, don't worry about like rushing through to finish everything today. We oh, okay. Can, like, we can pick up next week. Um, okay. Perfect. Perfect. Um, but one, so one thing I, the reason I got into using the indexes sometimes is. It's useful when you're doing various things with ellipsis that are selecting or, or doing various things that you really don't know what the columns are going to be named ahead of time. Um, and But you do know where their index position is going to be. And that's often the case when you're doing something else to the data, like count. So when you count, you get like, uh, if you count just one variable, like date, well, you get date and then N, provided that you don't put a name like, Count, or you don't use name equals and rename the n. Mm -hmm. um, so you might want to just pull the counts for whatever reason. So you can always just use like pull and then that that table that comes out of that and number two, and that will give you the n. So if you ever need, an, or you might just want to pull the variable after it's been counted, which is kind of like the same as distinct, but then you know you only need to pull uh, column one. And it's helpful. It's not immediately obvious why it's helpful if you're working with something like Mount Cars and you know all the names of the columns and stuff, but it does definitely become quite helpful when you're working with things that you don't know what the user is going to input into these like pipelines or functions that you're making, but you do know they're going to, as part of it, you're going to count. So if you're like plotting something for them and then instead of like renaming all the columns using like dots list that like, getting the ellipsis and using the list or doing some tidy evaluate to rename them well you can just either rename at like an index position or you can pull at an index position for whatever you want to do I, I don't know if that sounds that clear but it's like i've actually found it weirdly useful to know no i think i think you make a compelling argument i, I i've always just been worried about it in the sense that you know if if I use indices, I sort of have to be certain about what lies at a certain index. And I feel like names are maybe a little bit um, more reliable reference to a column than than, than their index. Um, but I, I, I see your point. I see your point. Yeah, def definitely. When you know the names, names are better. It's explicit. Um, yeah. You don't, yeah, like I said, it only comes in handy for me when I'm doing stuff like count or I'm yeah. summarizing. Or no, I think I think that's a that's a very nice that's a very nice and clear use case. Yeah, interesting. Cool. Um, I guess the other thing I, I learned about poll here is uh, this, this is straight from the example in, in, in the documentation. Uh, actually, um, yeah, it's not showing the results here. Um, it, it is um, you know, if you look at the um, if, if if we look at the Star Wars data set, um, um. You know, you've got some attributes about all of the characters in, in, in Star Wars. Um, and what you could do is you could pull out, like, let's say I wanted to have, I wanted to pull out the, the height of each character. And then I wanted to create a named vector. So not just a vector, but a named vector. I have the option. So there's this other argument in pull where you can indicate the variable that will supply the name and a named vector. So here I could have the height of the characters and then the names the names would be the names of those characters so you can see here you know i've got i've got uh, you know luke skywalker uh, c3po etc et um, i thought that was quite interesting 
not sure if it's ever going to be useful to me, but I, I thought it was interesting that that existed. I, I, I was not at all aware that the, that pull could do that. Uh, I mean, I guess it sort of saves you having to pull two columns and then construct a named a named vector. Um, I guess that's that's the that's the problem it solves. Uh, I just didn't realize that that could be done. Yeah, I didn't know that you could do this, but I think that's that could be useful as well. That's a, that's a cool one to have come across. Yeah, yeah. Um, relocate. I feel like we kind of touched on a little bit through <laughs> mutate. I suppose indirectly is that you know you can kind of move columns around. Um, you know, move more than one column, uh, and then and then provide a position for it in the data set relative to other other. Um, uh, what do you call it? Other variables or sorry, other columns in the data set. Um, I actually kind of wonder about the genesis of this because I, I was, uh, I, I end up going back and forth between R and Stata, um, kind of grudgingly going back to Stata for, for, for work things. Uh, and, and I realized that the before and after actually also exist in Stata. And I sort of found myself wondering like which, which came first or did two software packages independently come to the same conclusion that th these would be nice arguments to have like before before and after. Um, but uh, it, it, it's really quite nice. And I, I guess here I'll, I'll start with a new data set. Um, you know, the, uh, the GT package has a, a few neat little data sets. This is on a, a pizza place. So you can kind of imagine that, uh, you know, you run a pizza shop and these are some of the uh, it's kind of a set of like the orders that you have, like ID, the date, the time, the name of the, the pizza, the size of the pizza, the type of the pizza, the price of the pizza, better than empty cars, I guess. Um, or at least it provides a little um, uh, a little um, relief from empty cars. Uh, so, you know, I could, I could relocate columns within the data frame um, based on name, for example. Um, uh, and not providing the, uh, uh, or by, by name. So here I've got, you know, um could we relocate price um so that it um actually maybe it'd be better if i did something like glimpse or just names um i could relocate it so that it, it it's it's not the last the last column but the first column right gets moved to the to the left so if you don't incidentally if you don't indicate where in the data set it it's being moved, the default is to 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 the left. So, um, um, so that is to say, if if um, as I guess we'll see down here is, if you want to move something to the first column, just let before be null and after be null, which is the default, and that's you, you'll find that things get moved to the to the left. Um, so we could we could kind of move by name. Uh, we could use some tidy selects. Uh, so for example, I could move all. Um, so you can see here for this this uh, this this data set, um, we've got a few character character columns and and uh, and one numeric column. So I can move my numeric column to the to the left. Um, yeah, maybe it's better if I do something like anyway. Um, I'll leave it at that. Uh, so you can see that price has jumped has jumped here. It's the my my sole numeric variable, all the rest are character character columns. Um, that's kind of a nice way to move things. So based on kind of the data type, or you can base it on, on the name. So using all of the tidy select selectors we all we all know and love, like uh, I could take all the, the the variables that start with the letter, or columns that start with the letter T, and then move them to the beginning of my data frame. So I've got time and type uh, coming before all the, all the rest. Um, I thought that was pretty, pretty neat. I, I don't use the tidy select very often, and I think probably I should use it more often. Um, if if you want to move variables or sorry columns within the data set to particular positions relative to other existing columns, you can do so with the before and after arguments. So as I said earlier, if you don't specify a before and after, the default position is the first um, first uh, place in the data set, or kind of the first column in the data set. Um, you can do before, so I can say, for example, uh, you know, I can look at, let's look again at the order of uh, variables, uh, columns here in pizza place. I've got ID and the rest. Um, and um, then I can kind of move 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 time, before, or, or I can move name, the name of the pizza before time. Um, and yeah, lo and behold, 
name comes before time. It can come after type. Uh, you, you get the drift. Or you can move it into the last column. And this is what I was mentioning earlier, is there's this tidy select function to, to move something into the last, the last column, which I thought was kind of nice. I wish there were a first column thing, maybe just for completeness, but I think the Jack's Jack's really nice um, uh, uh, thing, you know, it really does uh, solve that 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 problem. You know, just saying that the column index one. Um, and then I guess the last thing, and I'll, I'll stop on this because I think we're at time, is I found this this nice little, I guess we'll call it an Easter egg um, within within um, relocate. So it, it, it turns out that for whatever reason, you can both relocate and rename in the same step. So, um, you know, just as a reminder of the names of the pizza place data set, um, you know, we've got name at the, right here, and this actually ends up being the name of uh, the, the, the pizza. So let's call it pizza name. Um, so I can relocate name, call it pizza name, and then because I haven't specified a location, I'll be at the first position in, in my in my data set, uh, data frame. I thought that was kind of neat. You can you can re you can rename um, as you as you relo as you relocate. Um, yeah, I guess I'll stop there. Um, I don't know if others are still on, and if so, um, have any questions or comments. But I'll, I'll, I guess I'll stop there so I don't go over long. No, great. Thank good. you so much. I yeah, thank you so much. I, I just wanted to sort of bring up, uh, and I don't know if you've taken, if you've talked about select so far. So you can do the renaming in select also. Yep, exactly, exactly. Yeah, that, that was that was another little Easter egg that I I had here. Is you could do that. I think I saw I saw that on Twitter uh, at one point uh, uh, that you can do the renaming. I I thought that was that was yeah, interesting in, in, like, as well. Um, in implicitly even um, uh, what do you call it, relocation as well, right? Because whatever order you would put your columns in, in your select. So you are essentially, I mean, and it only, I mean, it only makes sense when you have a few variables yep. you're selecting, but yeah, so, you know, you could sort of do the uh, re relocation of your column names any way, any which way you like. And then also in the same process, you could rename them as well. And I think since I have figured this out, like since I've learned this, I, I use it all the time, like always <laughs> the, the renaming thing. Yeah, no, I, I I use that pretty often too. Actually, once once I learned that that existed in Select, I use it very often. But I, I always kind of hesitate because it feels like it's a hack or a little cheat. You, you know, it's like a, it's almost like I'm I'm hiding a step within another step, if you will. Yeah, um, yeah. But but no, like you, definitely I I I, I use it because it saves it saves typing, and yeah, uh, yeah at least for me rereading my own code, it's usually fairly clear. But uh, yeah. Yep, and and it follows the same rename, uh, you know, thing of new is equal to old. Yes, exactly. So that the, the that new logic equals stays old. the same, so it's not confusing. And you kind of go with the same mental model. Exactly, exactly. Completely agree on that. Uh, there was one question from Shana. And his previous year hiding code chunks in CMP. Oh uh, yeah, I'm hiding code chunks. Yeah, actually, so for this, um, what what I'm oh, doing is like I'm, I'm using VS. I don't think it's... I'm, I'm using okay. like VS Code. So like ba basically, what okay. I'm doing is actually I'm relying on the fact that I can just send commands to the terminal. So I'm like I'm I'm executing them. On, I'm not actually, and I think here the implementation of the the. Um, Quarto in VS Code, it doesn't. So if I even like run the cell, for example, it just sends it straight to the terminal, um, okay. rather rather than showing mm -hmm. the 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 results mm -hmm. kind of in line uh, as it would in 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 R Studio. Um, but actually, you can do that even in R Studio, though the default is always in line. But uh -huh. there is an option in your settings which you can change and actually send it to uh, what is it called console. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, I didn't. And the other I didn't know thing, that. Okay, and the other thing that I thought, I think what this question meant was, um, I think what it's called code folding, and this is, you know, what you're showing is still your actual file. But if you render, while you, when you render your code and you don't, you want to keep the code but not show it all the time, uh, it's called code folding. So what you do is, you know, it will show you like that green bar uh, and it will fold the code. So it saves that space, you know, it saves your real estate and you can see the outputs of whatever is run. Uh, assuming uh, it's eval equals to true, which is the default. And then, so if you want to, you can click on that and it will show you the code block. Hmm, uh, interesting. Usually that's what I thought the question was. But yeah. Well, that's really cool.
Okay. Well, great. Um, yeah, thanks. Thanks everyone for for showing up and for for the great questions and and reactions. Uh, uh, I mean, for for me at least, like I, I I sort of was looking. You know, initially I just I just took a block because I was like, oh, poor Jack's presenting far too much and. And then I, I thought, yeah, I'm never, I'm not really going to learn very much. I, I know this part of dplyr pretty well, but really, when you re just sit down and read the docs, there are lots of, mm -hmm. at least for me, there are lots of little hidden gems that uh, I, I was completely unaware of. Many of them, I guess, are new gems that that uh, mm -hmm. uh, just came with dplyr 1.0 and after. Uh, but maybe there's some that have been there this whole time, and I just, you know. Uh, didn't didn't notice because I, I was intent on doing like a thing and wasn't interested yeah. in what else could be done. So, yeah, reading the docs uh, may sound like a hugely boring activity, but I found it really fun and, and rewarding for yeah. this go. Yeah, well, thank you so much. That My pleasure. Bye. All right. All the best, everyone. Uh, talk again Bye, next week. Everyone. Thank you. All right. Bye bye.